What's up guys, Chris schwartz Edmondson here from schwartz Edmondson Web Design. In today's video, we're gonna look at the new button layouts in Squarespace 7.1, things I like, things I don't like, and things that I hope to see Squarespace implement in the future. So I'm here in my Squarespace 7.1 site and I have my three buttons here. Now, previously we had a uh, one button style for the whole website that we could choose. So it could either be filled or it could be outlined, but uh, we didn't have any ability to set different styles for different buttons on the site. The only thing that we could do is set it to be small, medium, or large, but they would all have the same style. So Squarespace recently made an update where you can now choose from three different styles. So there's different button types now. There's a primary button, a secondary button, and a tertiary button. And then also this new UI, um, this is new. So we have our old edit button here where we can edit the design and the alignment, but we have these shortcuts now. If you just single click on the block, we can now choose from the button type. And then we can also do the alignment straight from this menu. So I love that, that's a great implementation. Less clicks is much better in my opinion. Uh, so let's go over these three different styles and how to style them. So um, each button here I've set to a different style. So we have my primary button, my secondary button, and then my tertiary button here. And to edit the button styles, you go to site styles and then buttons. And uh, here's our primary button settings. So the nice thing is we can set different uh, font styles for each of the three buttons. So that includes different font families, uh, different font weights, different font sizes even. Um, and uh, here's our letter spacing and then text transform if you want it to be like uppercase or not. So uh, I think that's great. Uh, I, I like that added flexibility of being able to have different styles for different buttons. Outline we'll get to when we talk about the outlined buttons. And then here we have the horizontal padding. So if I turn this up, the button's gonna get wider, more padding on the left and the right. And then here's our vertical padding. So more padding on the top and the bottom. So I love this flexibility, I think that's awesome. And if we go to our secondary buttons, we can now, let's go ahead and look at this shape selector. So we have these different shapes that we can choose from. And again, this secondary button shape is independent from the other two button styles. So we can do pill, oval, underlined, or this kind of teardrop look. And then if we go to no fill, we get all these same options, except it's just an outline. So I love this uh, flexibility that we now have because there's a very common hero design in web design where you have in your hero section, you'll have a solid button next to an outline button. And there was no way to do that before in Squarespace. But with this update, you can set your primary buttons to be solid and your secondary buttons to be outlined. And then if you place those two buttons next to each other, you get that same effect, which I think is great. Now, um, it would be a real pain in the butt if you had to come in here and just try and like drag your button settings to match between all three different styles. So there's a handy shortcut down here that just says match with primary button. So if I click this setting and then click continue, it'll automatically match my primary. And now I can just set this to no fill and outline and everything will be the same except it's just the outlined version of it. So that will, that, that definitely comes in handy for sure. And here for my third button style, so I could choose one of these buttons and just make like a bigger one. For example, for this primary button, you know, if I have a really big call to action, I might want a bigger version of this button on the page. So I could just match the primary style and then increase the text size. So I'll go to the text area and then I can just increase the text size here. And now I just have like a really big CTA version of my original button. So that, that would be a very good use case. Um, I could definitely see people using it that way. But since we do have this third option over here, why don't we just change this to like a text underline option? Now, you might not like how the underline extends past the word, so we can just turn down the horizontal padding, um, and now the, the bottom border will only extend uh, to the edge of the however much space the words take up. Um, and then if you want the line closer to the text, you can do that with the horizontal or uh, with the vertical padding adjustment down here. Um, okay, so we now have these three different button types that we can just easily implement across our site. So again, I love that flexibility. 
Something that I feel like I'm missing though is I would love the ability to be able to still choose small, medium, and large sizes for these different buttons. Uh, it's kind of a bummer, like I might want three different versions of a button, and then I might want different sizes of that button too. So it, it's kind of a bummer that I would then have to rely on CSS to make different sizes of each of these buttons. But um, again, I still think this is a huge step in the right direction that we can at least create different versions of buttons so we can create these types of layouts more easily. Let's go over how to change the colors on these buttons. So if you go to design, site styles, colors, uh, and then go to the color theme that the buttons are in. So I'm gonna be editing the bright two color theme. If you scroll down, so we now have all these different options for our primary, secondary, and tertiary buttons. So for the primary button background, that's pretty straightforward. Whatever color you choose here is gonna be the button background, and then this is gonna be the text color. Um, and then this one is like a little bit weird. So the secondary, if you have it set to outline, the background color becomes the like before state color. So it becomes the color of the text and the outline before hover. So if I change this, you'll see that the outline and the text will change. And then, uh, the secondary button text color becomes like what it changes to on hover. So if I hover over it, you can see the text color in the outline turns to yellow, and then the hover color becomes whatever you put the button background color to be. So it's a little bit odd there uh, to me. Um, I almost wish we had like a button and text background color that we could choose for the normal state and then different colors that we could choose for the hover. I just think it's a little bit shortcutty that they're doing it this way because again, it just gives us a little bit less control um, and it just feels a little bit, I don't know, I don't love that. And it especially becomes apparent that this is not a great system when we hover over this line option. Like, like who thought this would be a good looking hover state? That looks horrible. It would make much more sense if we were just sort of like fading out the opacity of the text and the underline. Like this looks just horrible to me. So again, this is a little bit confusing. So the tertiary button background color is actually like the before color. So if I change this, you can see it changes. And then the text color is actually what it changes to on hover. Uh, so if we go to black on hover, you'll see that the text and the underline turns to this color and then the background turns to whatever color that you had it set to before. So again, I don't think that looks very good for an underline button hover. I wish we had a before color options and then hover color options and that way we could just choose to set the background color of the button to transparent on hover. Because as of right now, I'm going to have to use CSS to uh, change the styling here. Because I know I'm gonna to have to use custom CSS, I might as well set it up to give myself a little bit more of an advantage. So for me, I want the background color to be black. And that way, um, the words will be black before hover and they'll stay black on hover. And I'm gonna use CSS to remove the background color on hover. So if I go to my custom CSS window, I'll just do this at the very top and I'll right click on the button, I'll select inspect, and that'll bring up my Chrome inspect window. And I clicked right on the element, so it takes me right to that element in the HTML over here. And you can see the different button blocks get different classes. So because this is my tertiary button, we get an SQS button element dash dash tertiary class. And if I go to the other button blocks up here, these ones are going to get secondary, and this one is gonna get primary. So they get very descriptive classes based on the type of button that they are, primary, secondary, tertiary. So because I want to edit my tertiary button, I'm gonna go ahead and copy that class. So I'll go ahead and add a period, and then I'll open up some curly brackets. And now we can set the background, um, and we wanna target this on hover. So I'm gonna say when the tertiary button is hovered over, we want the background to be transparent. And I'm gonna save that and nothing is gonna happen because our CSS is not specific enough to override Squarespace's default styling. So one way that we can just immediately increase the specificity of our uh, CSS that we're writing, since all the content on the website, it gets wrapped in this container that has an ID of site wrapper. 
we can just add this ID before our styling. And immediately, whenever you use an ID in CSS, um, it increases the specificity of the CSS that you wrote. So now you can see just because we added one more ID, our CSS is now overriding Squarespace because they're not using any IDs. And IDs are uh, the most specific selector. So that's perfect. Um, we now don't no longer have that background showing, but we also want to lower the opacity. So I'm gonna go do opacity, let's do 0.8. And so now as you hover over it, let's do even less than that. Let's do like point, maybe 0.6. So now as you hover over it, um, you, you get an interaction, but it's not as jarring and horrible as that background color was before. So that's how I would handle that. One thing to note about the button in the header is that it inherits whichever style the primary button is. So if you had the primary button set to underline, then this button in the header would also be set to underline. So that's just something to keep in mind. If you're going to be using a lot of rectangle solid style buttons on your website, you might as well make that the primary so that this button inherits that styling. And then if you wanted this button to be outlined, you could just make this the primary button style to be set to outline. That way this button would get that outline as well. Of course, you could also use CSS to target this button um, and override any styles that way. So uh, one thing that I would love to see in the future, I already mentioned the different sizes of buttons. I would love to see that implemented, uh, but I would also love to see a multi-button block. So the problem with trying to recreate this kind of design where you have two buttons next to each other is that's not really possible in Squarespace. So here we have a button block and I'm going to set it to be left aligned. And then I'm also gonna set this button to be left aligned as well. And there's not really any way to like get these perfectly next to each other. I do have a tutorial on my channel, so definitely check that out. I have some code that will place these buttons next to each other, but there's no way to do it by default in Squarespace. So I would love to see a multi-button block. So imagine it's like a button block, but you can choose how many buttons you wanna place next to each other, and then you can choose the style of those buttons in the multi-button block. And that way you could just easily place buttons next to each other in a single block, and the spacing uh, would just be perfect all the time. You wouldn't have any of this kind of weirdness to try and get the buttons next to each other. So Squarespace, if you're watching, and I know that you are, please uh, consider implementing that feature. That would be awesome. All right, so that's pretty much it for my wrap up of the new button styles in Squarespace 7.1. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing. I do tons of Squarespace videos like this and also CSS customization tutorials for Squarespace. So I hope you enjoyed the video and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.